Hi there, welcome to this in-depth video on vaccinations. This video will discuss everything you need to know. We will talk about the benefits of vaccination, some concerns, safety, and also the side effects. But if you're looking for a shorter to the point video, I also made that one. You can find the link in the description. Before we start a little disclaimer, this video is meant purely informational. This is not medical advice. And if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. So let's get into it. What are vaccines? Vaccines resemble a bacteria or a virus in weakened or in dead form. And when you're injected with it, your body starts to recognize it and build a defense to be able to destroy the bacteria of the virus. So the next time when you encounter the real bacteria or the real virus that normally would make you very sick, now you already have a defense and you can way faster destroy it so you won't become that sick. And this is what's called partial immunity. So uh, vaccination has many benefits and in fact it's one of the greatest public health achievements of the 20th century. It helped eradicating smallpox and controlling infectious diseases like polio, measles and rubella. And it's in fact our best strategy for prevention. It's also very cost effective. Vaccines aren't that expensive but um, they make sure that people won't become that sick, don't, do not need hospital stays or uh, expensive medication. And that's why it's one of the best healthcare investments a country can do. And that's why it's implemented in 168 countries worldwide. Unfortunately, there are also some concerns. And this is mostly because vaccines are way too effective. There's a decline in vaccine-preventable diseases worldwide. So we're not familiar with them anymore. We don't know what polio looks like or how severe it can be. We do not know the impact anymore. And that's why um, more and more we concern ourselves with the side effects of the vaccinations, the risk of vaccination itself, despite the effectiveness. And this leads to parent refusal of vaccination, a decline in vaccination itself, and this will trigger outbreaks of uh, vaccine-preventable diseases. And this can have severe consequences. First of all, for the child that is not vaccinated, because, because it can get way sicker now from the disease, where it normally, when it was vaccinated, would be protected against. But secondly, we have a decline in herd immunity. Uh, and herd immunity is when the whole ecosystem, a whole community is vaccinated, then the disease won't be able to spread because people will not get symptoms. And this is especially worrisome for children who are too weak to be vaccinated themselves. Children with leukemia, with cancer, or with immune deficiencies, they are too weak to be vaccinated. And when there is no herd immunity, the disease starts to spread in the community and it will get to them and they will become fatally sick from some of these diseases. For herd immunity, at least 90 to 95% of all people need to be vaccinated. So that's why it's important to keep getting vaccinated. Then you of course ask yourself, but is it safe to be vaccinated? And that's what we will discuss now. First of all, there are some infamous um, complaints that vaccinations may cause autism or leukemia. But there's no evidence for that at all. Extensive research has been done from multiple study groups and nobody ever found a causal uh, connection between vaccination and autism or vaccination and leukemia or cancers. But uh, it still keeps worrying parents and making a decline in vaccination rates. So that's very worrisome. You also need to know that safety is a major component of national immunization programs worldwide. And it, keep it safe by doing surveillances and scientific studies to the side effects and adverse events. Today we're looking at uh, vaccines that are routinely used in children younger than six years. So DTAP, hepatitis, influenza, meningococcal, and pneumococcal, rota, and varicella. And I will discuss them one by one and the side effects they can give. So you can make a good uh, pros and cons list yourself. So, we are, today we're looking at the adverse events following immunization and in order to have a valid claim uh, we need to look at the consistency of the claim, the strength of the association, specificity, temporal relationship and biological plausibility because otherwise a claim doesn't stand. So if we look to DTAP vaccination, very commonly after the vaccination children will have pain, fatigue, redness, swelling at injection site, can have a fe fever upwards of 38 degrees, 
loss of appetite, some restlessness, and irritability. Commonly, we also see nervousness, a little bit higher fever, vomiting, and diarrhea. And uncommonly, so less than a percent of all children will get a local re uh, reaction, flu-like symptoms, upper respiratory tract infections, and some more. I will not discuss all the side effects. Feel free to pause the video so you can read them for yourself. I will just name some of the highlights. And then, supposedly, there would be a connection between DTIP vaccination and type 1 diabetes, but there is not. The causality is rejected. Then, hip vaccination, Haemophilus influenza type B, may very commonly lead to re reaction at injection site, some lack of appetite, and 1 to 10% of all children will cry a little bit more, will have vomiting, diarrhea, or a fever. Also, here again, um, a connection between hip vaccine and hospitalization, a high fever or a serious uh, adverse event is claimed, but there's no causality between those, so it can be rejected. Then we're looking at hepatitis A. Very commonly, children may have uh, irritability, a headache, fatigue, use, some drowsiness, and a reaction at injection site. Commonly, we see nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, and some more. And less than a percent will have a hematoma, cold shivers, flu-like symptoms, rhinitis, hot flashes, and some more. For hepatitis B, commonly after vaccination, there is a reaction at injection site. Uncommonly, a child can have a headache or stomach aches. And rarely, very rarely, we can see an anaphylactic uh, reaction in yeast-sensitive uh, patients. It also supposedly would be a re uh, connection between hepatitis B vaccinations and short or long-term adverse events or uh, demyelating neurological disorders like multiple sclerosis. But again, there's no evidence for this, so those claims can be rejected. And there also... Uh, has been done one study that found causality between hepatitis B vaccinations and autism. But this study used, uh, compared vaccination in children younger than a month to children older than a month or not vaccinated at all. The study has a very high risk of bias and has a low quality and therefore uh, its evidence can be said to be insufficient and can be rejected. And furthermore, a lot of extra studies have been done from different studies groups to replicate these results, but nobody ever found any causality between autism and hepatitis B vaccinations. So that's important to know. Then if we look to inactivated polio virus, there's no evidence for any uh, causality between adverse events. There supposedly would be a connection with sensitivity to food allerg allergens, but this can be rejected because lack of evidence. Then influenza vaccinations, there are two forms. We have the uh, live attenuated vaccines, which are given intranasally, and you have trivalent inactivated vaccines, which are given intramuscularly. Both lead very commonly to headaches, pain in injection site, so muscle pain, loss of appetite, crying and irritability. Commonly, they can lead to swelling and redness, the place of injection, some low fever, sweating, joint pain, and uncommonly, lymphadenopathy and allergic reactions, where they can also lead to febrile seizures or mild gastrointestinal events like nauseousness, vomiting, diarrhea. Nothing serious. Then, if we look to MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, very commonly, we see that the children after the vaccination have a reaction at injection site, fever, uh, or an arthritis even. Commonly, we see skin rash, an uncommonly infection of the upper respiratory tract, diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, these kind of complaints. Again, here also is claimed that MMR uh, vaccine may cause autism, but again, this can be uh, rejected because of lack of evidence. And the meningococcal uh, vaccine may very commonly lead to eating disorders, drowsiness, crying, diarrhea, vomiting, and a reaction at injection site. Uncommonly, so less than a percent, it may lead to febrile seizures, paleness, or even a high fever, upwards of 40 degrees. Rarely can lead to an anaphylactic reaction on one of the ingredients of the vaccine or a Kowalski disease. Furthermore, uh, causality between headaches, irritability and urticaria and meningococcal vaccination is uh, supposed, but this can be rejected 
because of lack of evidence. Then PCV13 uh, may lead to febrile seizures, and especially in co-administrators of uh, an influenza vaccine. But no other adverse events were seen after PCV13 vaccinations. Then the vaccination for Rotav virus may commonly lead to diarrhea or irritability, may uncommonly lead to abdominal pain, flatulence, and dermatitis, and rarely intersubceptions, intersubceptions uh, which can be very dangerous. Uh, so that's important to know. Lastly, varicella vaccination leads very commonly to a fever, commonly to a reaction at injection sites, some irritability skin rash and uncommonly to infections, diapers, itching, urticaria and some more. Also uh, the varicella zoster strain uh, may be disseminated and may lead to infections especially in immune uh, compromised patients so pneumonia, meningitis and hepatitis can be caused uh, when this vaccine is given to immune deficient person. Also the vaccine strain may lead to reactivation of the virus itself and this again may lead to vaccination. Both are very rare but they can happen. So then we uh, will have to take home messages. Vaccines are extremely effective, so effective that all the vaccine preventable diseases are in a major decline and we're not even familiar anymore with the diseases where we vaccinate for. It's important that we all get vaccinated so we maintain our herd immunity and uh, children which are too weak to be vaccinated themselves will not be uh, getting the disease from us. Vaccines are usually very very safe and will lead only to mild symptoms after vaccination. So mild fever, maybe some diarrhea, nauseousness, a headache, a reaction at the injection site but nothing major and only very rarely may lead to severe side effects like infections or a re reagic uh, reaction and this is mostly seen in immune compromised children so healthy children almost have nothing to worry about and then for claims that vaccinations may cause leukemia cancers autism or diabetes they all can be rejected because there is extensive research done and no causal uh, connection has been found so in a nutshell this is my view uh, based on literature on vaccinations. I hope you learned something. If you're looking for more to the point video, I also made that one and you can find the link in the description. Furthermore, feel free to subscribe. I will be making more medical content. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.